peace and grand rising to the air. Today is January the 7th, 2021 on the Greco-Roman calendar, 1441 on the moon calendar. And this is one day before uh, we celebrate our prophet Noble Jew Ali's solar return, his born day, which is the 8th of January. So we want to just take a moment and give all high honors to our prophet Noble Jew Ali, who came to reintroduce us to ourselves and to point us to the Constitution and to the things that our ancestors did. And so uh, we, we just want to take a moment and, and honor him and start the call off with, with, with honor, high honors to the Prophet Noble Jewali. His words today um, are priceless. They are guiding us even as we speak through the Grand Rising. And we know that he was divinely connected just as we are divinely connected to the ancestral energy. Which brings me to um, a conversation that I was having today with one of our um, with one of our elder Moorish Seminole chiefs. And he's deep up in, you know, he's mature in age, in years, rather. And the information that he has is just stunning information, stunning information. All to our good is to help us. Um, so I would say that any more... Seek out the elders. They have information that what's happening now is they are coming out, the elders who had the information are now making themselves known to us. And they are hearing and seeing what the Moors are doing. And it's actually causing their memory to be stirred. And they're starting to think back on, you know, they'll hear us say some things and they start thinking back on things that were happening when they were uh, coming up. And it's, it's just, it's beautiful. And then they just affirm, you know, what we're saying or they add clarity to what we're saying. So many, I mean, I spent over an hour on the phone with the chief, and he told me everything from, I mean, a lot of the things that, that we hear, some more know these things, and then others of us are learning them or remembering them, rather. Let me put it that way, because we know, we all know everything within our nation. Uh, it's just a matter of what we remember at a particular time. And some are called to remember specific things and enact those specific things first, and then they get the rest of the information as we go. Um, Seminole, I mean, he just, he broke down so many words etymologically today and so many things on the map etymologically today. And I'll just share a couple of those. So Seminole. Seminole, that word broken down, they were Moors too. They were Semite nobles. That's what Seminole is all about, Semite nobles. That means the Semite part is the hybrid part, and the noble or, or, or nobles is the Moor. So they are a part of us part of us and, and part of the hybrid. So, and many, you know, many more know that, but I like, I'm a, I like words, so I like to break the words down. Um, 
another thing, Cairo, Cairo, Egypt. And many knew this already, but I'll share it with the ones who don't, who didn't know. He said that initially there was a North Cairo and a South Cairo here on this land. North Cairo, Egypt, and South Cairo, Egypt, or Ikupta. And all they did really was they said, this is the North Cairo line, and this is the South Cairo line. And then it turned into North Carolina and South Carolina. Something that, you know, they just... Again, we know that they switch spellings and, and pronunciations change, et cetera, et cetera. But there was the North Cairo line and the South Cairo line. So that's where North and South Carolina came from. And then um, the mandate, the mandate that our prophet received at Havana, Cuba. And Cuba actually is Kaaba, which over across the water, India, they, there's a couple of uh, uh, Asian nations that are considered the Kaaba, and that is named after Cuba. Cuba was the original land mass that, was the, that is still the Kaaba today. Uh, mandate, the mandate that our prophet received, the date that man, and, and there was a date given. The mandate basically states that we govern, and when we start governing, mankind is exiting stage left. And so the mandate that he received is an actual man date. Um, Tallahassee, Tallahassee, Florida. He said you just dropped the T because that T was not there initially. It's really Allah has seen, Allah has seen, or Allah has seen. And um, as well, the Allegheny River, and we talked about this one previously, but um, we were able to exchange information with regard to the Allegheny River. The Allegheny River is specifically mentioned in our ancient text as a place that we need to pay close attention to. And it really is actually pronounced Allah Gaini. Allah Gaini. Um, and the Allegheny River. There are four rivers that fork off from the Allegheny River. Two of those rivers are the Tigris and the Euphrates. And they're actually changing the names back on some of the maps now, back to what they should have been in the first place, which is the Tigris and the Euphrates. And then there are two others. Um, so... He also mentioned something that, um, and I want to thank him. I, I won't mention his appellation because I don't want him to be, um, I did not ask him if I could mention his appellation for one thing, so I'm not going to mention because I didn't ask. Um, and I want to respect his privacy. But Lamona Relly Bay, Grand Rising. Grand Rising, Grand Rising. Um, they, I've been asking the ancestors about some of the things that will assist us health-wise in terms of the food and the water. And um, a couple of those things, well, one of those things that he mentioned today that I knew, I knew it had some significance for us, and I've mentioned it previously. Uh, we know that when sulfur comes in contact with our makeup, it, it starts to heal things immediately. For example, sulfur-8 hair grease 
a lot of us are familiar with sulfur-8 hair grease. It smells not so great uh, based on the training that our noses have. Um, but sulfur-8 heals just about every skin issue and hair and scalp issue out there that we have. And he mentioned that the fountain of youth that is in Florida, and actually the fountain of youth is, and this is me saying this, the fountain of youth actually runs under all of our land. But specifically there are sulfur fountains, especially, particularly in Florida territory and some of the other territories, where the water, it's, it's actually sulfur water that is the fountain of youth and you drink it. And um, he said you will know that it's sulfur water because it smells like rotten eggs. So if you go to a, a place where there's water, it will usually be kind of brown and it'll smell like rotten eggs. Sulfur springs, yes, in the chat. And so, you know, we're going to be on the lookout for, for all of that um, just to bring it back to our nation and, and give us what we need. But that sulfur, uh, the sulfur springs, they're everywhere really. So we're actually going to be on the lookout for that. And then as we go back to um, the frequencies rising and we've been talking about how we eat and all of that, and it's been mentioned before about how some in, in many of the territories, the animals that were hiding are starting to come out of hiding, and sometimes you'll see deer in the middle of the street that were, that were not there previously that would not come out. You'll see um, animals, you know, coming out and not really being afraid, as afraid of us. And um, he and I had a conversation about Daniel and the lion's den, because in the um, bibliotech it talks about that story and about how Daniel was thrown in the lion's den and the king didn't really want to throw him in there because he didn't want him to be eaten. But he threw Daniel in the lion's den because the people pressed him. And oh, he, Daniel stayed in the lion's den overnight and then the next day the king, the early in the morning, everyone including the king rushed to see if Daniel's God had saved him. And Daniel was alive and well. Um, I believe he said that Daniel was sleeping on the stomach of, of the lion. And he asked me, he said, do you know why the lion didn't eat him? And I said that Daniel had some peace and was not at war with the lion in the spirit. Um, and so that's what I was thinking. And that's true. But there's a little more to it than that. A little more to it than that. But it's huge. Daniel was not eaten because the lion did not smell meat on him. Daniel was a vegetarian. And when and that's the only time that animals become quote unquote man eaters is if the men eat the eat the animals first. And if the men eat the animals first, then the animals turn around and eat them. Because they can smell and scent carpets on them. And that's why it's going to be important for us to migrate and transition back to um, vegetarian and veganism. And, you know, we know that, it will, it, it, that everyone's not going to do it all at once. It'll be, it's a process. We're transitioning back to our God, you know. But I just wanted to put that out there because I thought it was absolutely interesting and amazing. Um, yes, in the chat, <laughs> Justice Jeremiah says, so meat eaters will be eaten by those they eat. Yeah. 
And just as Frank said, meat is actually fruit and vegetables. It is not flesh. That's correct. And also, when the Albion foreign hybrids came here, they used to sing a song called, um, Oh, give me a home where the buffalo roam and the deer and the antelope play where seldom is heard. That song where they sung about the animals, the buffalo and the deer roaming and playing, it's because we didn't eat them. They didn't feel, you know, and they were everywhere. And so as you all know or may have seen, there's photos of piles and piles and piles and piles of buffalo heads, the bones and skulls of buffalo. There's a, an infamous photo of an Albion who just, they have a pile that's higher than, you know, a five-foot-tall or six-foot-tall man um, when they came here and began to, you know, just ravage the land. And so, um, you know, I just want to wanted to bring forth some of that information because it's too good to keep, um, to keep private or secret. So, and I don't do that. I don't do secrets as well anyway. <laughs> but especially when it comes to Moorish information, it's coming out there because we all need to know. Um, yes, Justice Jeremiah, the leaves are for the healing of the nation. And that's where our healing is going to come from, is, is everything that's already here. And then there's some things that are going to be coming forth through you all, through us, through all of us. Many, you know, all of us are going to discover some things over the next few days and weeks and months and years that we're going to bring to our nation and say, hey, look, I found this and this is natural and I heard this does this, this, and this. And I did some research and some study and I found out that it does do that. That's going to happen through each one of us here. That's why we have to keep communicating and talking to one another so that when those things come out, we can assist one another. So as we're doing our study and, and moving into to universal, sovereign, living, natural commerce, that is where the natural commerce is going to come from. It's coming from each one of us going out onto the land and finding something that we need and saying, hey, let's, let's trade this, let's exchange this, you know, exchange it for sovereign credit so we can do something else or exchange it for what you have so we can, you know, everyone can have the best of everything. And we will know that it's the best of everything because it's going to come from other moors who've done the research on whatever the product is, and product is probably not even the right word for the commerce that we do as the, as the nations and the natural people. And many more are already doing things naturally. It's just that, you know, I don't find very many more that go out onto the land and get their product straight from the ground where you can see them get the product, and then they say, okay, this is what I had. It came straight from nature. This is where I got it from, um, and I'd love to exchange this, you know. But that is actually where our commerce is going to come from, straight off of our land, and not as much in, you know, from, from synthetic things, and not at all from synthetic things, really. You know, that's where our commerce is going to come from. So those who are, are going into commerce, if you have not gone into commerce and you know that, you, that there's something on the land that you can research and you, you can look at it, look, maybe it's leaves, herbs, um, some, something on the land, um, prepare yourself through your study. Islam. To move into that kind of commerce. Islam. To move into that kind of commerce. 
so that you can um, accomplish what it is, uh, you know, naturally off the land. That way there's no shortage and it's coming straight from the air, from us to one another. Um, do your research and then also if you see something on the land that you have done the research and you know that it, it's something that you're interested in in doing commerce with, make sure that you do the research on who, what corporate entities were claiming that or that land or that whatever it is, wherever it is, and make sure that you lean, 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 do court actions. You must do the court actions because you can't do anything without the law speaking. And we, and we speak by lawful court action affidavits. By, and that's how we notify them is, is we send, send them something saying, you know, the law is here, that belongs to the heirs, and we're going to begin using those things. But the processes must be in place first. And then there's, um, a sovereign exchange process that we can do also, uh, on those things so that there is a lawful commercial exchange on the public record. And all Moors have the ability to do that and there's no shortage there. And that's the part that we're preparing to move into. Okay. Um, yes. So in the chat, that is exactly where all of us need to get to. Uh, just this Year more is saying that many moors near North and South Carolina, Georgia, uh, Tennessee, uh, yes, Tennessee, which is Tennessee uh, territory, etc., do most of their own natural farming. Yes, and we're starting that here. There are some empresses here who who know how to farm, and they've had their gardens going for um, at least a year and a half, and they more than a year and a half, actually, and they've come up with good crops. So we're learning as we go how to do that with the land that we have here. So um, start looking around more uh, on the land for something that is natural and abundant that you can uh, start looking at researching to do commerce with. There are some, again, some things that need to be put in place first uh, on the public record before we just start moving into commerce like that. Um, and those things are already out there. We already know what they are. Um, but just in case, we'll go over them right now uh, so that you can see what they are. Those things uh, do need to be on the public record. So uh, here, we'll go over them. Uh, uh, so in preparation for sovereign commerce, where we will be doing gold back sovereign exchange, Appellation change and judicial proclamation, termination of all corporate contracts, lien on all corporate non degree war names and subject citizen names and property, um, a Moorish American Consul Court actions on the on the lien to include tax assessors, policy enforcers, wherever any anyone that's having a false claim uh, on the resource, whatever that resource is, anyone having a false claim on it, you need to, to do the research uh, and find out who they are, uh, what corporations and courts they are, and do liens and court actions on them. And then create your own sovereign trust, uh, trust declaration of trust. Um, so that anything that you're wanting to use. Now, again, we always remember that the land, this land belongs to all Moors and not just some, and not just Moors who know processes 
and get to come and grab everything, and then the, the new Moors coming up won't have anything. All land belongs to all Moors. Let me give you an example of that. And then we share it and we use it um, the way that uh, that will benefit the nation first, which is all of us, as opposed to it benefiting just one or two more. So, for example, um, just a second. I want to make sure that I don't miss anything, and I don't think I have. Um, so I'll give you an example of, of what that looks like, okay? This domicile, and I said this the other day, but I'll say it again, and I'm going to say it repeatedly so that we, so that we have an idea of how things work. The do this domicile that I'm in right now, it belongs, it, all moors are the heirs to the land that it's sitting on. All moors are the heirs to that. However, um, I have eminent dominion here because of the claim that's on the public record. Okay. So for, for me and my kin, that is what this domicile is. It's it's for me and my kin, and we have the say on how this domicile is. But this domicile is not a commercial thing, okay? But when you go out onto the land, again, if you go up to a mountain, and this mountain has, it has gold, it has ore, because those two go together, ore and gold um, go together. And uh, the mountain has rushing fresh spring water, and it has some plants there, some valuable plants that help heal the nation. In order to keep the peace as we move into the commerce, the mountain belongs to all moors, and all moors are the heirs to it. And then the moor who's doing the commerce, if there's a moor, whatever that specialty is that that moor is doing, uh, the Moors must be competent to do those things because you really, yes, claim it for all Moors. That's what we've been doing from, from day one. Claim it for all Moors, not just for yourself, because in reality a claim for only one Moor. We have, you know, I've seen throughout the years when I started looking back in the record, I saw Moors doing claims for just for themselves. And it never worked out. It never worked out. But that's because that, that, that's not the way that the ancestors meant for us to do things. They mean for us to claim it for all more, and then we use it for, to, to enhance, enrich, and to heal the nation. Okay? And we'll be getting more into that as we go. When it's claimed for all more, then there's more cohesiveness and unity, and we can help one another better that way. Um, so, we all, yes, in the chat. Um, we're all wealthy. We're all party to the land. So now, as we go into the commerce piece, we're, pu we're putting some things in place that we're not in place for us in this lifetime, okay? Um, and it's not that they weren't in place, it's just that, that they were not activated because every, nothing's new under the sun. One of the things that we're putting in place, or not putting in place, but restoring and activating is Moorish banking. And so there are, are, are many more who are competent to do that, and then there are some more who are not yet quite competent to do that. However, it doesn't mean they can't do it. It just means that they need to get competent to do it. So we put together, uh, as we're moving through this process, and this is just to give us all a heads up on the direction that we're going in. 
Um, the documents that are on the screen, the name change, judicial proclamation, termination of corporate contracts, the lien on, you know, any domicile that you're in or and, and um, lien on the nom de guerre and the straw and all of that, and then um, a court action on all of the liens that you've done, you do court actions on all of them. And some will say that the liens are are a court action or a default judgment, and they are. However, you do need a sovereign court to speak in a court capacity. A lien debts the court. It puts the court in debt. The court action assesses a, um, a criminal penalty to the court. So anyone attempting, because for some, they can, like like in a service corporation, if they go in debt, we already know what they do. They declare bankruptcy and keep on going, or that's what they used to do. Declare bankruptcy, create a shell corporation, and keep going. So in order to stop that, a court action is necessary. Um, I will say this about leaves on straw on what the Thank you, ladies, for coming out. We're going to go on. Um, I will say this about liens on straw men and things like that. Do your study first so that you will know um, exactly how to do that, okay, without having any resources that you currently receive being stopped, okay? One thing I've noticed is when the lien is done on – let's say that that straw man that they were trying to put over us, um, nothing really happens in terms of stopping the um, whatever resource that's coming in. It has stopped them from assessing debt, but the resource that comes in, those resources keep coming. But when the court action is done, um, Study that process before you do it because there may be uh, an instance where they may put a pause, try to put a pause on it to see if you'll recontract with them. Um, and I noticed that that is what has happened where um, I'm concerned, but I'm not, I'm not concerned about it at all. They'll never get a contract out of me. They ought to know that by now. But I can show them better than I can tell them. So... Make sure that you know. And again, before we before we talk, we make suggestions about demonstrations. We do them first. <laughs> we do them first so we can tell you what what's happening. And they do tend to try and play games with the mind, but they can't they can't stop us. And and if you know that for sure, when when you get that in your spirit that they can't stop us. You, you won't, it won't bother you when they start trying to jerk your chain, you know, and, and they just don't know. I don't have a chain. I have, I got a bigger chain for them, you know, because the ancestors got us, you know. So um, let's just be sure that we do the study on these suggested actions uh, because we got to move forward. Now, there are some additional documents that the bankers, the Moorish American bankers, those who want to be on the banking side, um, because we're going to be, we're moving into the domicile piece. And where banking is concerned, banking is just accounting. It's not where Moors have to have a whole bunch of, you know, fiat or any, they don't have to have any fiat. In fact, fiat is actually, we, we actually try to make sure that you don't have any corporate contracts and no fiat attached to anything because we can't really do that. That's not how this works. So the banking piece, the, those who want to be on the banking side, there are some additional documents that need to be placed competently on the public record, and you need to be able to stand on those documents where banking is concerned. And let's, uh, I'll just uh, give a quick um, additional list 
of documents that need and and those who understand banking they know what these documents are about okay uh if when you understand banking you understand why we uh, a natural divine postmaster is documents should be in place the postmaster document should be in place because the postmaster and we talked about this previously the postmaster the un the one who was pretending to be the universal postmaster was actually the one doing business as queen elizabeth it was her it was the one doing business as her husband philip he all this time sitting back there quiet where nobody hardly ever saw him was the the corporate postmaster of the world so to speak and he was the one over all the postmaster is over all courts and all movement of finance so as the sovereigns of the earth and on the earth the moors all moors are the postmaster we we must be competent so you know we put the documents out there to to flatten the learning curve okay so that more can catch up and know exactly where to go and what to study and focus in on what needs to be studied but it is for study so that when it is time to demonstrate and stand on those documents you can do it so we don't mind putting the the affidavits out there we've all of these affidavits have been put out there at one point by I've done it and other moors have done it as well so that everyone can see what these documents look like and then we when we put them out there we tell you why that document is out there so the postmaster w was over all courts and all policy enforcers and everything and that postmaster was in cahoots with the pope so the postmaster provided the currency which is was fiat it had no value and then the pope provided the quote unquote indemnity factor or insurance so that when something happened there was um insurance so to speak behind the policy enforcers and that insurance really was nothing more than law where citizens and property is concerned it was in rem law that they were using fraudulently by the way and so when when you understand those inner workings and how they work together and then there was also um you understand why these these processes are important so the postmaster unum sanctum is the pope but we are all the sovereign pope and when you read the unum sanctum that we place out on the public record it is at Moorish American Consulate public records page um these documents I'll be doing a video showing the actual document sometime in the coming days um so that you can see the wording of them and what they look like um I probably won't read through them but I'll probably just video them so you can see them and stop the video and do the typing and whatever else you need to do uh Unum Sanctum says that all are under the Roman Pontus and we are actually the original Romans the original indigenous Romans okay um there there's a copy the fake romans the holy roman empire is the fake and then there's the moors who are the romans the greeks the phoenicians the sumerians lumerians and all of that that's us all of that was us the americans the israelites or it's not even the israelites but israel so we're all of that unum sanctum says that all are under the Roman Pontiff all are under all moors and the postmaster and the pope work together as the sovereign all of that is it dwells in us all of the authorities dwell in the moors and then the currency controller that's important do your study on the office of the controller of currency there are some manuals on the office of the controller of currency website that you can pull up there's also a manual on there about um national banks and and 
you know, again, it's a hypothecated process that they have. We know how to clean that process up as mores by putting everything in lowercase letters in red and giving it the right etymology by spelling it in an ancient English manner. So those manuals can be rewritten at any time. And they say what we want them to say and not what they're saying because the manuals do have uh, some codes and statutes in them that are not that don't have anything to do with us. For example, some of the codes and statutes in the um, on Office of Control of, of, of the Currency manuals say things about the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, the Federal Reserve, et cetera. Those have nothing to do with the Moors because no one governs and regulates the Moors but the Moors. So what we do is we'll look at the SEC documents and then we tailor them to what the Moors do. And a lot of that does not apply to us. Most of it doesn't. But that which does apply to us, we will use it because they're teaching us how to govern by putting it out there. Okay. And then as issues come up in our banking, we can look at those documents and then tailor everything to whatever it is that we need. And that's what we're doing with everything. With our courts, we're doing the same thing. Um, with our Moorish military and police, we're doing the same thing, taking older manuals and looking at those manuals and putting them in lowercase letters in red and giving them their proper meaning. Okay. So um, the uh, President of the United States piece. Now, that piece, you can say president, we spell it a different way because it means something different. It doesn't mean the same thing as, as a fake president or a corporate president. It doesn't mean that. It means something different. But you can also put prime minister because we know that uh, in our nation, prime ministers are that. Or if you choose, you can look at the... Um, you can look at the um, imperial divan and pull from the imperial divan and put a universal, sovereign, original, indigenous affidavit on the public record with regard to the positions in the imperial divan that match that. Okay, so we do look at the imperial divan as well, and, and the Moors that want to uh, do their commerce from that perspective can do it and it's acceptable, more than acceptable. So, um, and then uh, divine chief of police. If you look at the way the word chief is spelled there, that's actually a proper way to spell it. They were spelling it chief of police. C-H, they spelled it C-H-I-E-F. That says chief, but they're incompetent. So, you know, when we look at what they've done, it's, we have to fix it and make it the right, you know, make it say what it needs to say as we move forward in governing our own vast state. Again, um, always demonstrate at the level of your overstanding. Always, always, always. The things that we're saying are for your suggested study before you do them, okay? Don't do them if you don't understand them and what what the responsibilities are and what the how that affects anything corporate around you. Because we're filling in the spaces that were left by the liens that we filed. So when we filed liens, those corpses are out of the way for those who did those liens. And now we have to fill in that space. And that's what we're doing. So um, those who are interested in the banking piece and who want to be on the executive managerial, quote, unquote, side of the banking, these are the documents that, that need to be placed on the public record in red right. and all lowercase letters. And those are the actions. Court, you must know how to do court actions and you must know how to do liens because that is the majority of banking administration liens and court actions. 
And each banker, as we know, all of those fake judges were bankers. Everyone knows that. And we are doing the same thing. So um, we've learned a lot from looking at what they're doing, and we're going to uh, clean up what they did and use the law, Islam. So um, are there any questions about that? Yes, I have a question um, when uh, about banking. Do you know I had I had wanted to um, have my own zip code and everything, um, and the only way I knew to go about doing it was I wanted to grow hemp. And when I grew the hemp, I wanted the, a, a, a certain amount of land, and I wanted to, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Oh, okay. I wanted a certain amount of land, and then as you're saying how people all have to together, I wanted people to live on the land and work, um, and then we would have had our own zip code. And so is that the type of banking you're talking about, too, so we would have our own, have our own banks and everything? Because I'm interested in this banking part of what you're saying, too. The banking comes in where once we have, once we're all on the land, and we're we're on the land already, really, because all of the land belongs to the heirs. But once the Moors go out and they see the different resources that they want to engage in commerce with, because they have uh, studied that resource and researched it and found a way to make the resource, to begin to use the resource in commerce, um, there needs to be an accounting system that we use, and it's an accounting system. It's really not, it's not like the, like the fake did it. It's not like that where, you know, it, that system is used against you. The system is used to assist mm -hmm. in terms of keeping track of the resources on our land because we have a lot of resources on our land. And competent heirs will keep good account of what is done. And so as we begin the exchange process, we we want to know, you know, as as merchants and and entrepreneurs, we we want to know what's coming in our vast estate and what's going out. Mm -hmm. And that's what the banking piece is for. It's to assist in in that in keeping track and accounting of what's going on. Okay, that is a must. That's something that has to happen. And good examples of of us being taught how to do that is. For example, the tax assessor records. Those records were put there so that we would know to properly rebut them and then do a commercial exchange where domiciles are concerned and where property and land is concerned. And that's the one piece that had been missing from all of the processes that I've ever seen until now. And that's where Islam? the banking comes in at. Islam. Thank you. You know what else I had? You know what else I um? When you spoke about the snake, right? I have been seeing a lot of snakes in the street, but I got bit by a snake one time. Um, uh oh. Yeah, he bit me. I didn't. He didn't. I didn't see him. though. I had all these bags. I was trying to clean the um the holes out on the washing machines. So I had bags. I just threw them all in the floor. I'm stepping on the bags. All of a sudden, something hit my leg. Bit. And I'm looking around for something that could have ricocheted. Where do you domicile? Where do you domicile, Empress? What do you mean, hon? Where do you <laughs> domicile? In other words, where do you live? Well, I was in the territory. I was, I, was living, I was living in Virginia at that time. Okay, okay. That's why I was just asking uh, just to find out where 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 would snakes be in in that in that case. Um, oh. But yes, that's what we mean by the banking piece, Empress. Um, and so I would I would say do the study because there's language that goes with what we do. That mm -hmm. must that you must know uh, in mm -hmm. terms of um, the difference between corporate language and sovereign language. You know. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, Justice Jirlor, you had a question as well. 
Um, hold hold yes. for uh, just a moment, Empress. Uh, let me get with let, let me let's hear from Justice Jermore as well. Go ahead, Justice Jermore. Um, just wanted to make a clarification because it dawned on me that you know we keep saying accounting system, accounting system, accounting system, but we got that information from okay those the others. It is a counting system. Yes. That is what it is, not an accounting system. And that's, I spelled it out in the chat <clears throat> because remember how when we make these compound words, what happens? Yes. Exactly. CF Bay put it there, a counting system. That is what it is. And if we correct wow. that piece of language, we'll confound everything they are trying to do with it. Yes, Islam. Islam. Thank you for that. That is absolutely correct because that is the uh, the intention of what I'm saying. Yes. Yes. Um, if the the things that are on our land, competent heirs will be able to count for all that's coming in and out. We've always been really good at that. We've been the we were the best at it, and that's that's how everyone else learned. Uh, I was Islam. really, really yes, Islam. Just to add to that, bankers count. Yes. They count what comes into the bank and count what goes out of the bank. They do not yes. account for any of it. They yes. count it. That's how you balance the books, by counting. Yes. Islam. When I say account, we spell it a little differently. We put an E on the end, and it does mean count. But I, I like that that, that correct, correction and, and upgrade is being made. I'm going to remember that. Um, and correct me whenever I say accounting and put them together. Thank you, Justice Dearmore. So, um, as we go into uh, this counting system that we're doing, um, we're using gold back sovereign money. It's real money, real currency. And so right now, I'm, all of this is being brought up so that we can do the research and, and get the documents on the record, okay? Now, um, yes, the Empress mentioned a zip code, and, you know, when we hear zip code, we, you know, we're, then it's, you know, do the study on zip codes and where they came from and how they originated in the 1960s and how before that there were no zip codes, that we just, you know, it's just territories, et cetera. Um, and routes, routes, there are routes that, that we have, um, and those routes are actually, for example, I found out that the route that this territory is on is all on the same route, Route 78. You know, so they could actually, or we could actually find one another using route numbers. And not, it doesn't take us a five-digit zip code to find one another. Additionally, we use universal natural area code. A universal natural area code is a nine or ten digit alphanumeric notation that when that notation is, is put on any document, if, you, if I say Moorish American Consulate, universal natural area code is 4S3Q5VC78, uh, nine two, then all you have to do is put that natural area code into the natural area code mapping, and it will put you right in the very room in the domicile that I that that number originated from. So by the inch almost, this land has natural area codes that can be used where we can locate one another, no matter where we are on Earth. So we never needed zip codes in the first place. Are there any other questions about the banking piece? So 
So for now, this information is being put out here, not for anyone to go out and, and, and run and, and do, unless the ancestors say run and do something. Okay, it's being put out there right now so that we can prepare to move together um, in the banking and the universal sovereign commerce. So we must have credentialing on, and it's not even credentialing. I use that word because we spell it differently in red and all lowercase letters. But the affidavits, the lawful affidavits on the public record where banking is concerned so that we can walk through the banking process together. And then the Moors are still the creditors to all the nations of the earth, so banking is not something that's going to be held over anyone's head. In fact, when the Moors come to the Moorish Bank, they are coming to the Moorish Bank as the creditor and not as a debtor seeking something from the bank. It's, the bank is merely an, a ministry. It's a ministry. It's a ministerial process whereby the counting of our vast estate can be done. And all Moors can do banking, all Moors, can be on either side of that banking table. And so that's how we're going to continue to move into this economy of ours that is so vast that it's just unbelievable. We need as many uh, banker, Moorish American bankers as we need judges. And you, you must be judicially aware that all Moors are consuls and judges, all Moors. And the banking, the Moors that, that, that agree to do banking, and the agreement is not made with me, it's made with you and between you and the ancestors. Um, when you go, you, you have to know how to do court action, okay, especially on um, corporate corpses, because that's really where our court actions are, are at this point focused, is on getting corpses out of the way. So um, each banker should do a court action on any of the major corpses, corpse banks, you should do one, at least one lien and court action together on the bank just so that you become aware of who it is that was previously trying to govern our vast estate and so that you get some, some experience at governing in that manner because this is pure government right here, okay? This is how the estate is governed, by the law. So affidavits are the law, and unrebutted affidavit stands as law. Are there any other questions or comments about the banking piece? This is in preparation. So um, we have, again, these affidavits. We have um, affidavits out there. I've published mine that are exactly like this. And they can be copied and pasted. However, you must be able to stand on them, and so do the study. They should be in red in all lowercase letters, and they should be in ancient English. And the reason they should be in ancient English is because we don't want any um, corporate mis misunderstandings of the meanings of the words. So even if we use a term that looks like it's spelled the way a common corpse would spell it, it's in red in all lowercase letters, and it's surrounded by other words that are ancient English words, which changes the meaning altogether. Okay. And also the ancient English piece is in preparation for those who uh, speak and write other languages because they're going to be coming to us as well. Um, for banking services on our land. So um, are there any other questions or comments or anything of that nature? Islam. Islam. Uh, Sister Light, good evening. Uh, Melanick Turner, 
uh, Lawrence Bay. It's Lawrence. Um, yeah, very informative uh, evening. Um, you started off about the territory being named certain lands, and actually, what you're saying, America is the old world. And it just seems I started to study it from the solstice of the 21st all the way up to now and came across some vital things. And when you were saying about Tallahassee with the word Allah in it, Alabama with the word Allah in it, yeah. and the uh, Mississippi Valley actually being the Nile Valley and that Egypt and Ethiopia is part of the old ancient America. So yeah. us understanding lands and territory that we're going back to claim back, which is ours, whether through adverse possession or inheritation to the uh, ancestors, is the knowledge that we must have. I just wonder, when you talked about that, I said, oh, wow, she's right on the territory I've been on the last two weeks. And I, that was... Uh, very something that we understand about our civilization, where it comes from, how we lost it, and now that we're claiming it back. The ancestors are giving us knowledge. And as you said, we have to have knowledge in gardening. That's going to lead to commerce, leading to managing our own land and capitalizing on a system that was taken away from us. And we must prepare ourselves arrogantly, I may say, and putting this up in position, understanding banking system. Now, when I was back in Chester, Pennsylvania, which is right outside uh, Wilmington, Delaware, I was uh, president of the Alpha Mega Management and Development Corporation. And we dealt with the biggest banksters in that, on that region, you know, Fidelity, Penn Bank, mm -hmm. uh, the Riverfront Development Corporation was a a common a conglomeration of powerful world corporations such as Boeing, Vertol, Sunship, Penship, mm -hmm. Scott Paper Company, and so forth. And just make a long story short, we end up in a lawsuit. Um, they tried to take our inheritance. What we had, we took them to court. It was thrown out on a technicality that myself, as being Lawrence at the time, and partner Slide L. We were a private, uh, independent entrepreneur, and we had a corporation that was a corporate entity. So mm -hmm. back to that, we learned how this system worked and how it was taken away from us, all the way back to the 1800s when we lost the commerce and when we lost our Council of Court in 56 for civil rights, something that should never went down. But what we're facing right now, it's the reclamation of our land, our birthright, our heritage, our spirituality, and our identity as people. Yeah. And what you say tonight is exclusively important that we bound by that. In terms of having commerce, and you said start a garden. And when you start a garden, you learn how to manage a small piece of land. You understand the dirt the phytochemicals and the chemicals that's in the dirt to grow your crops. Now, I started a garden last May, and I still have the kale greens, the Brussels sprouts, the spinach, and all that still growing in my yard as of today. And, you know, I go out there and clip some off, and you're living off your land. And we have to start small and mentalize ourselves to getting bigger, bigger, and bigger, and bigger. So, you know, commerce and understanding, like Brother Jim Moore say, the counting system, not accounting, counting, because they count what goes in, they count what goes out, and in the middle they spend a lot of things too. So we, we have to be aware of those concepts. But I think we are, as a people, a nation, are on the right track. And I just want to be able to share more with the brothers and sisters, even what my experiences were and where we are going to today. So tonight was, to me, was very enhancing, very escapulating to what we are going as a people in the nation. And if anything I can do, uh, you know, to assist you in that endeavor, 
on open floor, because this is basically my territory, commerce and economics. Okay. I yield. We, we thank you so much for that nobility. All of us have commerce in our bloodline. We were, that's what all of this is all about, is, is um, having the right mindset and spirit to do commerce in a way that is honored universally. Is on. Not being, you know, we, we have, we, we, we are known for honorability, for being honorable in commerce. And that's what we're going back to, is taking the resources from our sovereign land and honorably counting and tributing, et cetera, universally. And the rest of the earth cannot wait for us to get it going. And many of the Moors already have commerce going. Um, They were able to do it under the fiat system, but it's going to be an easy transition because many of them have already terminated corporate contracts, and now they're just using sovereign credit going back and forth through uh, apps like Cash App and WhatsApp and, you know, sort of those those types of things, you know. Um, You mentioned Some dates, you mentioned the 21st, which was the solstice and information coming in through that time period. That's very, very important because for for all of us, yesterday the 6th was a very important day in terms of downloads from the ancestors. Now, every day is important from them. Let's get that straight. Every day they they download information. But there are certain days where we can open up and get um, I think it's just that the electromagnetic frequency of the air is is, is more active. Let me put it that way because we do have electromagnetic peaks and and then it goes down and then up and down and and the information tends to come when those electromagnetic peaks are are, are higher. Yesterday was one of those days the 5th and the 6th, the 21st of this month will be another, the 20th and 21st. And see, we can look at the service corporation and they have those dates marked off for things that appear to be one thing when really it's something else. So they have that date, the 20th and 21st, to to fake a couple of inaugurations, whatever that means for them, uh, when they don't even really exist. But those two days are going to be important days where commerce and the moors are concerned. So if you have any demonstrations that you're setting up and getting ready to do, get them ready. And um, if they can wait and be done on that day or if you need that the time between now and then to gather your, your uh, documents and everything and put everything on a public record and notify everyone, then do that. The 20th and 21st are going to be great days to do demonstrations. Um, the 28th of this month is a full moon. It's the wolf moon. Mm-hmm. That That's going to be major day. So we have many days this month where demonstrations can be done, and we will, you know, the energies, we can harness the energies that will be active on those days. Islam? Islam, uh, I agree, and I have things lined up even in, uh, Louisiana and some adverse possessions of land down there that we're um, heirs to. Mm-hmm. And actually, yeah, we we must demonstrate to claim back which is ours. And that's the strength of our nation being grown again. Once we do demonstration, we get confidence in how to do them and do the studying on them. I'm even picking that up even more and more. I got more time. I, well, I created time. I let go of some of the things and prioritize what's important right now for a nation, mm-hmm. for yeah. the Moors nation. Yeah. You know, I'm Kurt Washington, Tunica, but we're all Moors. This is our nation. Yeah. This is our land. Our birthright was taken, was stolen from us. Now we're in a period that we're getting it back in a lawful way, lawful document. Yes. That we learn how to demonstrate and identify with these documents and put them to our best use. And, you know, I'm excited about it now. Over the last week, like I said, 
from the solstice up to now has been a re-energize and regeneration period yeah. for me spiritually and with the heirs and, and our spirits of the Moorish nation. Yeah. So I'm excited about it and demonstrations are coming. I think I'll be very good at them because I have a legal sense. You know, I went to law school through this system. I didn't get my degrees. I spent two or three years to learn how to get through the red tape and say, I'm coming out. I don't want to be a lawyer. I don't want to be part of the uh, the bar back to the mm -hmm. constant thing and, and, and Britain and the uh, chancery court and so forth. So I got out of that. But I got some knowledge, wisdom, understanding, some truth mm -hmm. that I can help myself move along, claim myself as a Moorish, and aid our brothers and sisters in achieving what our goal is. So I say that, and you know, I'm very excited, and I yield. Yes, and um, you said something important there too, Nobility. You talked about, you mentioned red tape. Does anyone know where that term came from? Red tape. Yep. Yes, Islam. Islam. <laughs> red tape comes from <laughs> there it goes. Red yeah. red tape okay, it's it's none of your business because the Moors are in charge of it. Yes, mm -hmm. that's what red tape that's is. What it means. Yeah. Now, I did it means a little, don't go there. Because that's the Moors. Don't go there. <laughs> yes. And see, and when you do that, you're stepping on something that you can be decapitated for. And that, and mm -hmm. since they took decapitation literally, <laughs> yeah, they meant uh, you were going to have to find another head to wear. That's yeah. right. <laughs> so, anyway, um, the, I made a little, uh, just uh, that I wrote in here, and I said, everything counts. And this is exactly what you're showing right now with that... Um, list of things to do because if you want to read it you'll see the sense that it makes yeah it's hey, it Gilmore, says, you're a hell of a good storyteller yeah. i love you man yeah. keep it up everything counts the scales must be in balance for yeah. banks to odd mm -hmm. equals zero in the books because yeah. right. remember they're not closing out the 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 books they are closing out that transaction. Transaction? Mm -hmm. Trans Go ahead, Justice Jermore. Action. <laughs> Islam. Yes, Islam. Oh. Good transaction means the action away from them back to us. Yes. Yeah. Well, trans is yeah. You, you do, a transaction is uh, wherever something is being moved from one side to the other, it is exactly. being transited. So yes, it means the same thing we do. We do transactions, the action of transmitting the thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you know, court actions words, are an action it, as well, and then exactly. there's a transaction that follows that. Yes. Uh -oh. okay. That's why the books must be balanced to get to art, because it must come out from front or back. It must balance. Yes. Reading forwards or backwards. Yes. Islam. Islam. So... This is all um, the direction that we're going in that we actually must go in because we, as we can see, the, you know, we've learned all we can learn from that other system. And now it's time to, to apply all that we've learned to our own sovereign system. And again, our system's been in place for since time immemorial. And all we're doing is restoring it. So do the study on um, the steps and, and the documents. Do the study. 
and the ancestors will give the information to you through the study. And then we will give, we give, we share information. That's what these calls are, is just sharing more and more information um, about um, all that needs to be done where the Moors are concerned. And all of our documents are, um, they have nothing corporate in them, nothing corporate in them. So once we lean the court and do the terminations of corporate contracts and all of that, we don't have to worry about them stepping in, seeing something that, that, that looks corporate and saying, well, we can tax that because they left the back door open on that, you know. So we're not even concerned about, about any of that. We, we can keep moving forward in doing what we're doing. That's the purpose of the documents is to keep it so that uh, we are – uh, so that no one is violated by the fake. Okay. Um, and then throughout this whole process, again, um, number six here on the screen, it mentions a um, the indemnis facere, where uh, which is six B here, indemnis facere. Our full faith and credit is in ourselves. In that indemnis facere. We state that we are our own law enforcement. We're the police, the military, and all of that. We're the fire department and all of that for ourselves. And um, that, in, that means that, that the fakes have no job to do here. We do all for ourselves. Because when we, that was part of the fall, when we accepted aid, quote, unquote, from them, they usurp. And so in order to stop all of that, we just cut off all corporate contracts and do everything. We assist one another in doing all of this ourselves. And that's another reason why it's good that we live near each other uh, and start coming together in that manner so that we can look out for one another that way and, 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 and form up. It doesn't take many more at all. Uh, we, could, we could do everything with three more, you know, uh, in, one, in one place. Everything can get started with three, just three more. The banking, the fire, the police, all of that can be done with just three more because it only takes one sovereign to do everything, really, because we can wear every hat because we have the sovereign authority to do so. And that is the lawful... Um, overstanding that we're going to continue moving forward with. Are there any other questions, comments, et cetera? We'll be saying more about these documents and, and putting them on the public record and then moving into the process by which uh, domiciles and things like that, because all of this has everything to do with possession of the vast estate actual possession of it, not just possession on paper. But the possession on paper must be competent and be in place before actual possession takes place. And so by being, by knowing that we don't pick up the phone and call their policy enforcers when something goes on or, or their fire department, because that's contracting. And that's how they were able to steal everything seemingly, because they didn't really get away with anything. But that's how they gave the illusion of owning it. And we, we can fix that. We've already fixed it. It's a wrap. If there be no other questions or comments or, um, or anything at this time, please take a look at the list, go down the list, start getting those documents together. Many of you have them together already. I would say please go back over them and fine tooth comb them so that you can take out any other language that you may have, have learned since that time period that you first did it. You can pull out or put in whatever needs to be pulled out or put in, okay? Um, Islam. With that being all, yes, Islam. Um, I had something I wanted to share uh, based on my research journey. Mm -hmm. um, I looked at a, um, well, I had recently made a post based on research about the New Year's 
uh, celebration. And I have to say that I know, or we all know, we must know that the Eldians do nothing without reason. And it, and it seems like the more subtle it is that they do, the more we need to pay attention to it. And, and I say mm-hmm. that in regards to the New Year's celebration. Um, New Year's, uh, was it January or December 31st? Well, at midnight between January 1st and December 31st is the fall of the, um, the Red House. But I know that they do stuff to cover up something else. And I had looked at a um, a video by Abdullah Bay, who was talking about the significance of the astrological significance of Christmas. And one thing that stood out the most was the stars, namely Sirius. And on December 31st at 11.59.50 is where the star Sirius reaches its highest point. And I say that to say that, you know, in our studies, we need to be looking at the cosmos. And that's one of, we put a lot into the New Year celebration. And that must be a very significant star that we need to study. It may help us on a lot of, on on all levels that we talked about tonight and levels that we did not talk about. Yeah. And I yield. Empress, when you, when we start having these discussions, bring that information to the table so that, like you did tonight, so that we can put it into, so that all of us can put it into our study banks and bring it forward and use it to the best of our ability, you know. Uh, that's what these calls are about, um, and there's a little bit of a uh, an echo coming here. Let me get rid of that echo. Um, these calls are so that we can share as much information as we all get, and um, Use it to our benefit and to our, to our, to our, you know, so that it helps us. Because we are moving fully into universal commerce on a major, uh, uh, platform, which is the platform of the heirs. Um, and as we move into that, all of that must be considered. We cannot do commerce and not consider the stars. Because there's contracting days. There's days that are better for contracts. There are days where, where we should pull back and do research on the contract just to be sure, et cetera, et cetera. We need all of that information to be brought forward. So that's why there's so many of us who are so knowledgeable about things. Because we're supposed to bring that information to the table and assist one another. Where I may know about, um, banking, the banking piece and how to get it going, others may know about another aspect of that that they can bring to the table that that says, hey, you know, you're doing this, bring this this science into consideration too while you're doing that. And that's going to help all of us. So Empress Portia, thank you for that and keep it coming because we need that information. And it's, it's already in our nation. The information is already in our nation. We have it already. We don't have to worry about um, um, getting that information from, from foreigners. It's already within our nation. And so let's use it. Okay. And we can't cover everything all in one call, or the calls would be, you know, many, many hours. But uh, we want to cover as much as possible so that we can get things moving in the way that we need to get get it moving. You know, uh, we don't need to delay the commerce piece any longer, but it does need to be done properly, lawfully, 
and make it so that it's indisputable and inviolable and unalienable and inalienable. Uh, is there anything else that we need to consider? And please do the study on the serious star. Okay. Thank you. I'm back again. Um, when I was telling you about the snake, it was information that you had said earlier, and I was just trying to confirm it. But um, when I, like I was saying, I was bit by the snake. Um, so nothing happened to me because I didn't even know I was bit until weeks later. But then when you were saying that if you're a vegetarian, that they won't, won't even hurt you. But what happened is when he bit me, they say, that his fins were supposed to wrap in me and that most of the time you have to pull snakes off of you. But I only thing I'm thinking now since I heard you say that is that when he bit me, he didn't wrap his fins in me, and he, did, he must not have released his venom or something either. But I think what happened is the snake was living in my house all the time because I was back and forward. And so while he was there, I don't know if this makes a difference, could he have thought he was my friend, too, or was it just that I didn't eat meat that he didn't hurt me? Um, he might have been used to biting people's ankle, and he bit the wrong one that day. Oh. <laughs> you know, he might have he been used to, you know, attacking people because whenever they see feet, usually those feet are looking to get rid of them. And see, that's and what I did. I I think I stepped on him, and his, that was his reaction. Mm -hmm. oh, hey, you know what, Empress? I'm so glad you're okay, and I'm so glad that that could not, because the bibliotech even talks about how you'll eat anything and it will not hurt you and, you know, all of that, where we're protected. We're protected. But we're protected as we protect ourselves because we're God, really. And as we thank you, that's what that's what all of this is about. Empress, is us moving in that direction, mm -hmm. so that um, so that we, you know, we're 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 literally protecting ourselves. <laughs> the thank way you God so much. would have us protect ourselves, and that God thank is us. Yes, He is. Yes, we are. I shouldn't yes. say yes, He is. But thank you so much. Yes. Thank you for sharing that, too, Empress. We needed to hear that. So now we already know vegetarian is the way to keep yourself safe from animals that like to bite. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's, that's motivation right there, you know. Um, and on that note, thinking about just, just really quickly, and then we'll conclude the call for this time, um, thinking about... Uh, and Empress, I'm gonna I'm gonna mute you because there is a little bit of feedback coming from your line. Okay, um, all right. Yes. Okay. Thank you for that story. I appreciate you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Um, I used to. We all are 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 used to seeing something called the Universal Circus, and it was all about the Moors who had complete dominion over the animals, and they were really good at it. And they did that up until a certain time period, and then after that, it was no longer feasible to do it. But throughout the ages, we've always had dominion over the animals because we did not eat them. I mean, they wouldn't, they're not interested in eating us because we don't taste good. <laughs> That's why, you know, uh, vegetarians are not, they're not tasty to the animals. That's why uh, you don't see them, those like the snakes and all that, you don't see them eating plants, you know. You see them eating animals, other animals. And if they know that we're not that, then we become back into our rightful place of having dominion over them. When we created the animals, we created them to not want to eat us. And it's only when we wage war on them by hunting and eating them that they said, okay, that's not God anymore, so it's time to eat Islam. Um, Islam. With that, yes, Islam. Islam. Just quick, wanting to tell about this, uh, continuing with the snake stories, I put a little, um, I put a little thing in there. Uh, when, between five and six, I don't think I was quite six yet, I was caught 
playing with a coral snake and totally horrified the family. Because I was playing with this and the, the, uh, the coral snake was supposed to be one of the most poisonous ones and it uses its uh, black and red colors to attract people to it. And I was playing with it, it didn't do anything. But later on that year, I was bouncing up a bee up and down in my hand and it nailed me. I never bounced another bee in my hand since then. So two lessons in one year. Yes. Islam. 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 Hey, Islam. 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 Islam nobility. Yeah, that's what they uh Sister was saying about the snake bite. I was looking here, you know, however the word Len Lenape means we the people, which is the preamble of the United States Constitution or true people. Lenape also means serpent. Mm. Yep. <clears throat> yes. That's the the snake people. Ohio, et cetera. We are the snake people. Islam That's why the serpent you. mound is such a huge uh, thing uh, back in the Ohio Valley. Yes. Islam. Mm. All of that makes sense. All of that makes sense. Naga was taken serpent. and corrupted to Niga. Ah. And our people think that, uh, you know, they corrupted the thing and so, oh, well, it means the same thing. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it it no, does it not. No. You know, but anyway, I rest my case. Islam. And since he and said that... Uh -huh, go ahead. Go ahead. And as he said, the snake is the God people. So after the snake bit me, I started to study them. The snake's backbone is just like our spine. And then I begin to realize that we, just like he was saying, we are the, like, just like the snake. Even Michael J. White is one of the best, he was one of the best fighters there was. When Michael J. White would fight, sometimes, a uh, 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 melanated man, sometimes when he would fight, he would wrap around his component just like the anaconda would. But thank you again. I just had to add that part on because we really are like the snake people. Even yeah. even in the Bible, they had one snake going one way and they had the other snake going the other way. And it says, you physicians heal thyself, and the snake was in representation of that. But thanks again. Wow. Islam? Wow. Islam. Yes, Islam. Don't forget now, you remember the last lecture we had from Tai Chi Bay Sun, the snake. So it shows you the positive they lied to us. So you see, they, they're on the ground, so they didn't worry about the stuff that we do. So try to watch that last segment of House of Real Waking the Mind. It was long. Yes, he did. He did talk about the serpent then. Mm -hmm. He sure did. Wow. Um, hey, it's time. It's time for, I mean, we're coming together um, in the way that, in our thoughts. So it's, it's, it's only fitting that we would be uh, discussing and coming to the yes. same conclusions everywhere. Isn't yes. That is why we are attracted, our people got attracted to go to hospitals because we had the trace memory of the caduceus, which is the curling snakes running up the spines and the aroba. Yeah, same thing, exactly. Yeah. And that's why our people were so happy to go to hospitals and offer up themselves to be... Uh, Partitioned. <laughs> Whoa. Really? That's crazy. <laughs> oh, well, stop volunteering, Islam. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what I said, what I said earlier about how they do nothing mm -hmm. without reading. You're right. Islam. Well, we will, we will um, take a pause here and we'll be back on Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern time to continue sharing information and moving forward in our sovereign status on our own land. I'm so excited about that. It's just unbelievable that we are here now. 
but we finally made it. We made it. Gmail. Oh, let's see. Islam. Peace and grand rising to the end. Peace and grand rising. Peace and grand rising. Peace and grand rising. Grand rising. Grand rising. Peace and love, Washita. Grand rising. Yes, Islam to the Washita. Grand rising. Grand rising to the Washita. more. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Islam to the Lenape Moors. Oh. <laughs> Islam to the Seminole Moors. Uh oh. Islam to the Cherokee Moors. Oh, Islam to the Cherokee Moors. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm moving from there to here. Lenape to Cherokee. Yes, Islam. And my grandpa. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Islam. Man. 